postcards seem to really strike a chord with many of you. We have already moved on and are preparing some new videos for you guys, but we were looking through the comments and we discovered some very interesting things about this rabbit hole that weren't really mentioned in the previous video. Many began having deep memories of the past. Comments mentioning how their grandparents were orphans. Grandparents speaking of coming from a cabbage patch. Even stories of them having to work in mines. Very interesting comments, and I highly suggest that you guys go check them out, and thank you for everyone who shared their thoughts. We see them all, and it truly assists us in our research. There are also many comments concerned with the legitimacy of these photos. How do we know that these postcards are even real? Yet, as referenced in the first video, there is a book on this subject. Babylon Surreal Babies. And on top of that, we will see further proof in this video that this indeed was what they were advertising in the early 1890s. There was someone on the Discord claiming that we actually came in and photoshopped these postcards, which couldn't be further from the truth. Then we saw a comment that posted a link in a title, and it caught my interest. Come to find out that this rabbit hole gets even deeper. Yes, even deeper than the fact that they were literally shipping and delivering babies legally in 1913, and they would even put stamps on the children's clothing? Even crazier than that, supposedly, the world's first narrative film, the first real movie ever, is called La Fée Chou, or The Cabbage Patch Fairy, from 1896. Now that was the 1900s version. There's some controversy on the film outside of the entire Cabbage Patch repopulation subject because the director was a woman named Alice Guy and later was named Alice Guy Blachet, which creepily is the same exact woman from the postcards. The 1896 film La Fée aux Choux, The Fairy of the Cabbages, is a lost film directed by Alice Guy, and so supposedly they recreated this film multiple times. You will see this happen with many lost films, and that's its own subject that there may be something else going on with all these early films and we're not really told about it. Quote, Many films of the silent era have been lost. The Library of Congress estimates 75% of all silent films are lost forever. About 10,000 American silent films were produced, but only 2,700 of them still exist in some complete form. Have you ever heard of Alice Guy Blaché? I'm the filmmaker. I've never even heard of that. I've never heard of Alice. I've heard of her as it with one point. Uh, no, I've never heard of her. I think people will think you're making it up. Eighteen ninety-five, the Lumières present the first public demonstration of their new invention, the cinématographe, the first reliable method to project motion pictures. Among those invited, a young secretary, she thought, why not use film to tell stories? Alice Guy writes, directs, and produces one of the first narrative films ever made. Alice is one of the first to utilize many film techniques including close-ups, 
hand-tinted color and synchronized sound. Alice founds her own company, where she directs and manages all aspects of production. Following a two-decade career comprised of a thousand films that she wrote, directed, or produced, Alice disappears from filmmaking. How could such an important figure in the birth of cinema not be known? Many original footages that were completely lost, and then they came in and just replaced the missing footage? Very strange. But the 1896 version of the Cabbage Patch Fairy had a completely different story, involving a honeymoon couple, a farmer, pictures of babies glued to cardboard, and a live baby. We will cover this in detail later, but we only know of this because that's what the supposed Alice Guy character left us with. But how do we know? I mean, did you see the way she was treating those babies? The big question is, why is this the first idea for a movie? It's all very strange. And on top of that, this 1896 version is a lost film, so we don't even have the original. There are most likely many more. But arguably, this is the first movie ever made. Then she remakes this film twice with the 1900 and 1902 versions. Now the reason that we know there was an earlier lost film is because in 1922, the director Etienne Arnaud wrote in his memoirs that Alice Guy, quote, was the first to have the idea of staging a dramatic scene in front of the cinematographic lens, end quote. The controversy started here because he supposedly, according to the mainstream narrative, wrote the wrong film. The film he was talking about, directed by Alice Guy, was not the Cabbage Patch Fairy, but another film, Le Méfait Dante de Vous, or the misadventures of the veal head? So calf head? Baby cows? What's with all this dark humor early film stuff? I mean, all of it is very eerie. These are the first films being made? This film is about a baby cow's head that escapes from a butcher's plate, and then somehow the head combines with the butcher to produce a hybrid human? Which, if you look it up, it will say it was directed by another director called Ferdinand Zecca. Now this gets deeper because these first movies were created by the oldest French film company in the world, the Gaumont or Gaumont Film Company, or the Society of Establishments. So the first films were done by production companies, but strangely many of their first films involve very macabre themes and it makes you question if any of this has to do with Alice Guy. And the Cabbage Patch Kids? Well, I would say so. Because why would the first films be promoting the selling of babies? Well, they created this first Cabbage Patch Fairy movie in 1896, specifically for the Paris World Fair and the baby incubators. This movie is proof that the baby postcards are real. As we were looking into Alice Guy, we found a very fascinating page on this exact subject. And at first, it just came from clicking on a Google image and we were looking for older screenshots of the film. Come to find out that this page from three years ago was putting this all together as well. They're not necessarily promoting the orphan train stuff or anything, but this is a massive library of these old postcards and she connects it with Alice Guy. Then she translated them as well, so shout out to this page. But before we continue, I just wanted to make sure we were all on the same page that these are real postcards and what they are. Two really stuck out to me in this collection because they made it clear that these postcards had to do with repopulation without any question. In this depiction, we can see that there are cabbage and rose seeds being mixed into a device that then produces babies in mass while the woman in the red dress catches the baby, then they fall out of her dress, and then on top of that, she's holding the clock weight signifying changing time. There's another illustration that translates to repopulation tank or center, and we see a giant woman, the one in the dress, being the symbol for the Cabbage Patch Kids, 
generating many kids that go flying in the air as the man with the top hat begins pumping to fuel the operation. Then you can even see that they're maids to take care of them, and new people coming in to take home babies. Now many seem to think that somehow these could be photoshopped or fake in the sense that they were done in the modern day. Well, take a look at even more of these that were not in the first video. There are so many that it's mind blowing.
All of this was to promote the incubators that were happening at the World Fairs, which were, quote, a boutique of fully operational baby incubators filled with live, premature infants. Why premature? And why are they creating Art Nouveau posters? One done by Adolfo Hohenstein, which is not a postcard, but this is a poster from 1896, and you can see that there's a snake going around the stem, but also that there are babies being grown from the flower buds. There is no denying it. These Cabbage Patch references, these growing babies depictions found on these old postcards, real postcards, posters, and now the first film are all depicting babies being sold at incubators at the World's Fair. And we're not going to ask any questions? Is it not interesting that the first film, the first real movie that was not a short, was right out of this period of 1896. Are we possibly dealing with some strange remnants of this art and film that were a part of a transitional phase after the reset? Think about it. What if this footage of the Cabbage Patch Fairy is what was given to the orphans? We only know what was given to us about the original film. And what's with all this remaking film stuff? Seems like there might be something else going on. Could there have been footage in the first film that someone didn't want us to see? Or did they make some mistake and decide that they were being too blatant in their symbolism? We also must consider that during this repopulation process, there would be people in charge or overseeing this process. And what if that's what these first film studios were doing? Getting ready to repopulate the world with entertainment and distraction which would explain why many of these old films are so weird and scary. What if these films are some kind of trolling from elite groups that had not only taken over newly renovated cities, but were also re-engineering found technologies such as the camera? Just like dating on historical events and photographs can be incorrect, the same goes for these early films. Not only do many disagreements and controversies exist on the origin and creators of these lost films, but many aren't even certain of who directed which and what date it was created on. So is it impossible to consider that some of these films may not be from an older civilization, but from some type of transitional phase in which these secret societies moved into taken over cities and were going through this repopulation program when they decided to make these films to leave the new inhabitants that were freshly plucked from the fields. It does seem like they were playing with this technology at the time, as if it was some joke. Is this really the true origin of movies? Now, there are more details on this original film. First off, there's even more confusion because in 1935, Leon Gaumont, the guy who literally created the studio that was hiring Alice and the other director, Ferdinand, who made the baby cowhead film, well, he corrected the matter in 1935 that he himself directed the first film that was trying to tell a story to the audience in front of a painted canvas that naively represented the Rue de Belleville. His feminine star was Alice Guy, and two mechanics from the studio were the first screen actors. He also claimed that this first film was called Le Méfait Donté de Vous. So there you have it. The creator of the French studio, which was started in 1895, stated that he was the original director of the first movie ever made, and that the feminine actress was actually Alice Guy, and that this first film was not the Cabbage Patch Fairy, but the misadventures of the calf head. This is the real controversy. They don't want it to be known that the earliest movie was some weird dark film involving a butcher cutting off a baby calf's head and serving it as a dish? I've looked everywhere for the film and it doesn't seem to exist online. Strangely as we searched, we found that there's an actual kids book called The Misadventures of Cowhead. Maybe it's nothing, but still strange that this came up when searching for the translated film. So it seems, for some reason, this Cowhead movie was removed from the spotlight so that the first film became The Cabbage Patch Fairy, and that throughout the century, there is enough evidence to confirm there were indeed three versions of the film. 
However, a lot of this new information comes from a book in 1976 translated Autobiography of a Film Pioneer. The multiple authors discuss all this information on how a report was started by Leon Gaumont in 1907, then later corrected in 1945. But it seems that this is just some information coming out in 1976 used to change the history of the subject. As we mentioned, Gaumont made it clear a decade earlier in 1935 what the earliest film was and that Alice Guy was the actress in it. So there's a lot of back and forth when it comes to the history of a lot of these lost films. Lots of different opinions, but after 80 years go by and we just forget all about it and just go with the new mainstream explanation. Well, what if Alice Guy, who in the 1902 version specifically has a midwife, not a fairy, used to assist the honeymoon couple with their child? So they changed the film from the Cabot Patch Ferry to Midwife First Class? Which is strange. So midwives are involved in all of this? Helpers for having babies? Is this the fairy? The woman in the postcards? There are even more details to the 1896 version. It starts with a pair of newlyweds walking in the fields during their honeymoon. They come upon a field of cabbages where a farmer is working. So. This first film was far more advanced as they had multiple scenes. The young man asked her wife if she would like to have a baby. So they go through the field and find a baby made of cardboard. But both he and his bride are disappointed by it. Then they hear a cooing behind a more distant cabbage. He discovers a beautiful live baby. Then they compensate the farmer and leave excitedly. And the farmer just shrugs and returns to the fields. Now, the confusion becomes greater because in the original film, there was no fairy, yet they still called it the 1896 version of La Fée aux Choux. Or is it something else? Why was it lost? Why would you even make a film like that in 1896 when you're just discovering film for the first time? Seems more like some type of play on occulted knowledge, as we see with many of these early films. All we have are memoirs from her which I suspect have been edited. But in her memoirs, she specifically says that her first film was called La Fée aux Choux, which doesn't make any sense. They make the excuse that because the baby was screaming, that the mother jumped in and that's the reason there's no fairy in the original film. That's what they leave us with. That this film was made because of the French legend that boys come from cabbages and the girls from roses. But where does this legend come from? And why was it used to promote incubators with occult symbolism? Why is this first film dealing with screaming babies in a cabbage patch and some woman picking them up and putting them down on the ground with little care? More contradictions with these old films include Alice Guy stating in her memoirs that in the photo of La Fée aux Choux are my friends, Germain, Ivana, and myself and that this Ivana is the actress for the fairy. Yet the photo she was referencing isn't even from the film, it's from the 1902 film Sage Femme, which leads me to believe it's not just a coincidence that they have so many mistakes. Someone came in and started adding information that just didn't add up. Also, her descriptions of the movie describe that there was a woman running or jumping into the field of focus. Yet neither the 1900 or 1902 version have this bride running into the cabbage field, which suggests that the 1896 version was shot on a larger format film, such as the 58mm which allowed for widescreen. That would support there actually being a much larger and longer film originally and perhaps what we are left with are the fragments. Sort of like Metropolis, which that movie deserves its own video. But the same thing happened with this film. They had an older version, and then they came in and edited certain portions. You'll notice it if you go and rewatch it. But again, what's with all this strange occult symbolism? And also, very advanced visuals. They say that this was all painted in backdrops, but I think there's something else going on with these old films. Since people are curious whether any of this is legitimate info, well, all we know is what we're left with in early catalogs and memoirs that do confirm that these three movies were made by Alice Guy and that they existed for all three versions. 
The strange thing is, many of these descriptions in these catalogs that come from Alice don't even accurately match the movie. So she must be talking about other films. How could she mistake her own films? Her first description was a loving couple walks through a vegetable garden in search of a baby. A fairy deposits live babies which she then removes from the cabbages to the delight of the young couple who are overjoyed. This early catalog has been lost, but there is one from 1901, and this description from Alice Gee accurately describes the 1900 version and says it was a huge success. Also, in 1902, Sage Femme was released and was in the September 1903 Gaumont catalog. So they say this first movie was a huge success. But how? It was only a minute long, very creepy, and the babies are screaming and crying. How was it a huge success? And then just a year later, they remake the same movie, but this time with dolls? It's still very creepy, look at this.
There are only one or two films in the 1900s to have subtitles, and The Cabbage Patch Fairy is one of them. The longer name of the film is actually The Cabbage Patch Fairy and the Birth of Infants. So it's interesting because in this film it shows the subtitle, The Birth of Infants, which you would think would be the title. But they say that these titles were purely descriptive and that there were no artistic titles for early films. And that she thought of this name with the 1900 version, but I'm not sure if I buy all that because she says multiple times in her memoirs that her first film was La Fée aux Choux. There's more evidence that these may very well be all connected to the same film. The evidence for the 1896 lost film is found in seven extant Gaumont films. They say that when the painted panels of these films are put together, the size, at least 40 feet long, indicated that it was prepared for a larger format film on 58mm that was only used at Gaumont during 1896 to 1897. These original 1896 backdrops from the lost film are supposedly reused in the 1900 and 1902 versions. Some of these panels connected along their edges and some are connected by specifics in the painting. And that there was even a witness that claims that one of the painted backdrops from the 1896 film was used in the dark misadventures of the Calfhead film. Now what if these are all connected and there's a reason that they are lost films? I mean, how do you just lose the footage? Well, think about it. What if it was once one large film on Cabbage Patch Kids? like a feature widescreen film in 1896, but they decided to remove it? Or was it possible that this was during some transitional reset time while orphans were currently being populated? These societies or the societies of establishments or Gaumont had begun playing with the technology that had been left from a prior age. They performed these occult shows and plays on film in a very dark and comedic way just to leave behind for the orphans. And they were heavily symbolic, combining symbols of cabbage patches or genetic engineering with the symbols of sacrifice and the butchering of the calf head, the baby cow's head. Well, these early films were actually done using a different technology. One of the Gaumont Studios other major achievements include Via Passion de Christ, which was also directed by Ferdinand Zecca, who directed the calf head movie. Well, this is one of the earliest examples of colored film using a stencil color pathochrome process. This is quite the achievement for its time, and there are a variety of other manipulation and compositing techniques used. It hints towards there being an older origin to this art form. Alice has other movies as well, many of which that are very strange. She was also involved in what is called trick films where they would show someone doing magic tricks with the purpose of selling compositing tricks as real. There's also one on animal magnetism, where a hypnotist puts a woman into a trance, which was really just a man in a dress, undresses her, and so it would seem that they do know of many occult topics. What's even stranger is that from 1896 to 1920, she has over 450 films. Around 1910, her name was changed to Elise Blachet. And sure, many of these videos are shorter in length, but I just don't see the proof that she made all of these. Because they left us a title in the movie? Or a description? That's it? She has over a hundred lost films. Is that not suspicious? Or is there something else going on? Another ploy by a massive industry trying to portray a new technology and art form as being created by a single person or inventor. And in this case, it's Alice Guy, or it's spelled Alice Guy. Or was she just the face of this Gaumont film company? She was also the director of a film on feminism that showed a world where gender rules are reversed. If so, are we not going to question why there's so much controversy with these early lost films? And what was the purpose of promoting the selling of babies as the idea for the first film? Also, in the last video we never mentioned, but a similar character is R.L. Stein, who most likely is another figure that is just a face for a larger corporation. But they were promoting in the 80s, garbage pale kids, 
which was a series of sticker trading cards that came with gum. But some of these illustrations are truly horrifying and then were used to make stories for R.L. Stein. Peepin' Tom? Depictions of malformed children? Eating disgusting junk food? They're not exactly funny as they are disturbing. We have these vivid illustrations of Cabbage Patch looking child characters that are put in these strange and extreme scenarios. Whether they're obese, suffering from terrible rashes, being tortured by faceless adults, and even smushed into the tire of a car. Some children are depicted in different stages of neglect, and others are shown with exposed blood and organs. Seems strange that they would be promoting such gruesome content to minors. But why? Especially if this is a reference to Cabbage Patch Kids. Is it because there's something in horror that points to a dark truth? Is that what makes these stories so interesting? The legend of the Cabbage Patch? Well, what do you think? Are these just pictures of babies on postcards? Or is there actually something deeper to this that hints to a suppressed and dark past? What's up with these lost films? And is there a reason that they would promote Cabbage Patch Babies as the true first film? All we can hope is that our minds may be unveiled. Let go of everything you think to be true. Relax the mind and ask the question, do I truly understand what this reality is?